Welcome to Electron Line, and in our next video here, we're going to take another look at the electron structure in atoms, but in a way where we're trying to explain how we can have an equation describing the motion of an electron in an atom. And so we're going to first take a look at the general wave equation, which is right here, and then translate that somehow to have an electron move around in a box. And of course, assuming that electron waves behaves more like a wave than a particle, when an electron goes back and forth in a box, we assume that it goes around like a wave like that. And of course, an electron to exist in a box as a wave, it cannot destroy itself, it cannot have destructive interference, which means that the wave pattern an electron in a box should have is what we call a standing wave pattern like that, where the wave is simply stationary, where we have nodes over here, or in the, the second energy level, we have nodes in the middle and at the end, in the, the next energy level, we have two nodes and two no nodes at the end and so forth. But again, it needs to be a stationary wave panel like that, where we have quantum states where the electron, electron can exist and nothing in between. So how do we adapt a general wave equation of a traveling wave into something for an electron that exists in a box? And when we can do that, we can then use that equation to describe how an electron can exist in an atom and how we can describe the wave equation for that and then from that the probability of where we can find the electron and when we do that we can finally explain why electrons exist in orbitals the s orbitals and the p orbitals and the d orbitals in an atom so that what that's what this is all about so we're starting from a very basic understanding and we develop that so we can understand why we have orbitals in the shapes that we do in the first place so if this is the wave equation for a traveling wave, and by the way, V here stands for the velocity of the wave, and if we look over here, here we have a wave, and of course if it's traveling at the right of velocity V, you can see that a small time later the wave will have moved to where now the dashed wave is. That means the wave is moving to the right, which we, of course we can't have over here because the wave has to be in that same location. The equation that we can find to describe this wave which satisfies the general wave equation is this equation right here. It is the amplitude of the wave times the sine of kx minus omega t. kx is the position relationship and omega t is the traveling relationship that depends on the velocity of the wave. Notice that k is the wave number, which is 2 pi over lambda, and omega is the frequency of the wave, the, the, the radial frequency. And finally, the velocity of a wave is the frequency times the wavelength. So, if we can have this equation right here because of the dependency on time, which there isn't over here, so what does the wave equation look like for an electron living in a box? Well, it turns out we need to get rid of this portion right here. And so when we take that away, this would then be the proper equation describing the equation of an electron in a box. Now, it still needs to satisfy this equation, but realizing that there's no dependency on time, if I take the second derivative, of this equation with time, I get the same function, which means I can simply write this equation in a different way. I can write it like this. I can say the second derivative of the wave function with respect to position is equal to, and I'm going to leave that portion alone, simply the wave function. Because the second derivative with respect to time of the wave function here still seems, simply gives me back the wave function. But what about the constant right here in the front? Well, there's two things we need to consider. First of all, it's not traveling with a velocity v to the right. It's stationary in the box. So if we take a look at that, we go back over here and we realize that the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And the uh, frequency can be written as omega divided by 2 pi times the wavelength. And then we realize that the wavelength divided by 2 pi is the inverse of this, which means it's 1 over k. That means velocity is equal to 1 over k times omega, or 1 over the velocity is equal to k times 1 over omega, and if we then square both sides, we get that. Which indicates then, that instead of writing 1 over v squared, which is meaningless for an electron in a box, because the wave stays in its, its place, we then realize that it's probably simply related to the wave number. And of course, since omega is no longer part of our wave equation for an electron in a box, we can probably just ignore that and assume that instead of writing 1 over v squared, we can simply write k squared as a constant that we need there. And one more thing we have to realize, when we take the second derivative of a sine function, we get the negative sine back, because the first derivative is the cosine, and then the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we get a negative sine 
Since we're not doing that on the right side, we have to account for the negative here to make that work. So we need a negative sign. So now we realize that this equation right here describes an electron motion in a box. Because we know that we have to have a standing wave equation. And also we could probably assume that when we go to the atom and the electron travels around the nucleus, since it exists in quantum states and can only exist as an orbit equals one wavelength or two wavelengths or three wavelengths, that this probably also in a way applies to an electron in an atom. And we'll see that in just a few videos. So what I'm going to do now is show that if I take the second derivative of this with respect to x, that should be equal to minus k squared times the original function. Let's find that. First, I'm going to take the first derivative with respect to x of the wave function. And of course, if I take the derivative of this, I get a times, instead of the sine, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, you get the cosine of kx times the derivative of the angle, which is times k, which gives us ka times the cosine of kx. If I now take the second derivative of the wave function with respect to position x, I take the derivative of this, which is ka, the derivative of cosine is the negative sine, so I get the negative sine of kx times the derivative of the angle, which is k, and that's where I get a k squared and I get a negative. So this is equal to minus k squared times the sine of kx. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now notice that if I plug that in here, right there, so I get minus k squared, and let me put a little line there so we don't get confused. So if I plug this in here for the second derivative, I get minus k squared times the sine of kx, and that should be equal to minus k squared times the original function. Of course, the original function is this, which is a times the sine of kx. And right away you can see that, yes indeed, since the left side equals the right side, this would be a proper equation to describe the wave function of an electron, which means that we can define it by this sine function right there. So we can say then that if we describe these wave motions of the electron, or the wave positions of the electron, that might be a better way to say it, we should be able to describe it by this equation right there. And that's then the foundation of the equation we're going to use to try to describe the position of an electron in an atom. Of course, in an atom we're talking about three dimensions, so we'll have to make some adjustments to that. But you'll see that as we move along. At least at this point, you should be able to see that we now have a wave equation to describe the motion or the existence of an electron in a box, and we can now see that it satisfies the general wave equation adapted to a box, an electron in a box, from the general wave equation that we see up here. And hopefully that will help you understand how electrons exist in confinements of a box like that.